God's word. Please stand at this time. John 17, beginning at verse 13, and it reads, But now I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy made full in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, mm. because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I do not ask thee to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. Our message for this morning is, the word defeats the world. Mm. Yes. The word defeats the world. And when we're discussing the topic of the word, we must never forget that the word has two manifestations. You have the written word and you have the living word. And in both situations, it takes the word living and written to defeat the word. Yeah. And when I talk about the world, I'm talking about this wicked system we have come to know, that we have become comfortable with, All right, yeah. that we have become accustomed to, that we are no longer shocked by. All right. Nothing we see has any impact upon us anymore. Mm -hmm. We have become dulled in our senses to what's going on around us. Mm. And in order to defeat that, it's going to take the word. Amen. Both living and rich. Yes. So, if you have yet to figure out where we're going today, then just hang around a little longer, then you'll understand clearly that we're going to be talking about the word. Uh -huh. If you look at the text today, we see that Jesus is doing the talking if you have your red letter edition. Right. Uh, these words should be in red. Uh, it says, but now I come to thee. Jesus is praying to God the Father. And the first thing he says, but now I come to thee. If Jesus is now coming to the Father, then that means that he has to be leaving someone else. When Jesus comes to the Father, that means that he is leaving his disciples behind. And in order to leave the disciples behind and go to the Father, that can be a horrifying experience for someone who has walked with Jesus a number of years and experienced the power of Jesus in his miracles and everything he has done in his three-year ministry. He says, but now I come to thee. It's good for Jesus to go to the Father because we read elsewhere in the Bible that when Jesus goes to God, he doesn't just go to God and leave us empty-handed. He goes to God so that he can send us some well-needed help. Right. He says, I come to thee, and these things, say these things, these things, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy made in full. First of all, if we're going to be in this world of which none of us have any choice about, we're here whether we like it or not, you may have experienced periods of drought as it relates to joy. Mm. Some of us are in a joy drought right now. All right. Yeah. We can't seem All right. to put joy in our hearts. No one else or what they say or do can seem to give us joy. And when I talk about joy, I'm not talking about happiness right. because happiness is All relative right. to your current situation. Right. And if your current All situation right. changes, your happiness changes right. along with right. it. Right. Joy is something yes. you can express yes. Yes. regardless of what's going on yes. in and around you. Right. And if you are suffering with being able to express joy in at every time, then you are probably leaning on happiness as opposed to joy. Right, because yeah. your situation may have taken a turn for the worse, and your happiness took a turn with it, so there's no joy in the vicinity, so you're walking with your head bowed down in sorrow. Uh -huh. It says, I come to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that 
they may have my joy made full in themselves. We need to have joy made full within us. And the first thing we understand is that in order for joy to be made full, it can't be our joy. It has to come from Jesus. Yeah. Jesus yeah. is going to the Father and he spoke some things in the world so that the joy that he had can be made manifest to us. Now let's look at this joy. First of all, what is it that Jesus said that can give us his joy made in full? Well, first of all, Jesus is the word of God, the living word of God. So joy comes from the word of God. It comes from the living word of God and it comes from the written word of God. Both words together equates to joy if you allow them to sink within your heart. Yeah. So if you're trying to get joy anywhere else other than from the word of God, you wind up with happiness. And happiness is why you are where you are right now instead of having the joy that comes from the word of God. So, so he says, he says, there's some things that he said here. There were some things that are spoken in the world. Now, I don't know about you. Yes, there are some things spoken in the world. If I turn on CNN, there are some things spoken in the world, but it don't give me joy. If I turn on the radio station, if I turn on Sirius XM, if I turn on the satellite dish, there are some words spoken in this world, but they don't necessarily give me joy. The only words spoken in this world that can give me joy are words that come from Jesus. Amen. So you need to regulate where your word is coming from. Right, is yeah. your word coming from man? Amen. Is your word coming from God? Yeah. And if you're allowing the word of man to come into your heart, then out goes your joy. Amen. So, 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 so we're talking about joy this morning. If you ain't, if you ain't caught on, it, you see, joy comes from the word of God. And if you ain't having joy, you need the word of God. Now, what are these things? Well, if you just back up a little bit with me, if you, if you turn back to chapter 14 and verse 1, these are some of the things that Jesus said so that we can have his joy. And if you're really allowed to seek in church, you will start to develop that joy in your heart Amen. that's being spoken of today. Let's look at 14 and 1. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, also believe in me. So if you want joy in your heart, Jesus told them, if you believe in God, you need to believe in me. Yeah. So joy comes from faith in Jesus All Christ. Right, yeah. And not only does joy come from faith in Jesus Christ, if you go down to chapter 14, verse That's 16, right. he says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. Yeah. So joy comes from having help. Some of us don't have joy because we don't have help. And if we don't have help, it's because we didn't believe in Jesus Christ. And if we don't believe in Jesus Christ, he doesn't go to the Father to send you help. So joy comes from the Word, the living Word. Joy comes from the living Word going to the Father, coming from the Father, sending joy back down to you so you can have help in all your situations. Sometimes you get lost in the midst of your daily endeavors. Sometimes you don't know whether to turn left. You don't know whether to turn right. You don't know which way is up. You don't know which way is down. It's because you don't have no help. You don't know what decision you need to make at the time of making decisions. You don't know if it's right. You don't know if it's wrong. It's because you don't have any help. Say, I need some help. I need some help. Let's go for it. I want some help. We need help, church. We need help. So, so, so Jesus said some things that will allow us to experience some joy. First, he said, believe in me. Then he said, I will send you help. Now, let's go to chapter 15, verses 1 and 2. In 15, verses 1 and 2, he's telling us who he is. He says, these are things that give us joy. He says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. Get this. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, that means you got to perform in ministry, church. He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, that means you got to perform in ministry, church. It says he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. My, my, get this, my. get this, get this, get this. We get joy from believing in Jesus. We get joy from the help that Jesus brings to us. Right. We get joy from attaching ourselves to the vine that is Jesus so that we can produce fruit. You remember yeah. Jesus was walking and he passed up the, the fig tree? Right. And get this, this fig tree was a pretty fig tree, y'all. You ain't never seen a fig tree like this. It had a, a, a thick trunk. It had some leafy branches. and It was green. And it had everything that a fig tree needed to have except for figs. All right. All right. All right. 
And Jesus looked at me and said, how is it that a fig tree not producing any fruit? That is as useless as useless can be. Right, now, let's right. break it down to modern terminology. Right. How is it that one of my believers, redeemed by my blood, yeah. can't produce any fruit? All right. And if you remember what he told the fig tree, it's, it's, it's not very encouraging for those of us that refuse to produce fruit. He told the fig tree, dry up. Hey. And it said the next day that fig tree had withered up and turned brown. Uh -huh. You ever heard the terminology withering on the vine? Mm -hmm. You will wither on the vine if you don't allow the joy of Jesus to all come right, into your right. heart. All right. It's like a trickle down theory. It's a domino effect. The joy leads to other things. See, joy will encourage you to do other things. But if you don't have no joy in your heart, you ain't going to want to teach. If you ain't got no joy in your heart, you ain't going to want to preach. If you ain't got no joy in your heart, you ain't going to want to reach. If you don't have no joy in your heart, you ain't going to want to be the husband that you need to be. You ain't going to want to be the wife that you need to be. You're not going to want to be the child that you need to be if there's no joy in your heart. So Jesus is telling us Amen. that we need to have joy made full and he has given us his word that he has spoken to all believers, not just the first century disciples, that his joy, because joy comes from him, will be made full in us. Some of us walking around half joy. All right. That's like half pregnant. Uh -huh. That's like half dead. Yeah. Ain't no such thing as half joy. All right. There's only full joy. Yeah. There's All only right. full gospel. All right. All right. And I'm not talking about the church denomination. All I'm talking right. about the word of God. All right. So let's stop right. being glass half empty, which might as well be completely empty. Yeah. Because Jesus is into full glass Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. So look at the text. He says, he, he, if, if you come on back, he says, but now I come to thee. He, he's saying that I got to leave them, Father. I, I've done my work. If you go to verse 4, uh, 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 it says, I glorify thee on earth. This is Jesus going through his resume. This is why he's going back to the Father. This is why he's leaving the disciples. This is why he has gave them some words to sustain them while he's gone. In verse 4, it says, I've done my job, Daddy. I'm coming back to you. I glorify thee on earth, having accomplished the work which thou hast given to me. Jump down to verse 6. He says, I manifested thy name to me. Yeah. men whom thou gavest to me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gavest them to me and they have kept thy word. So Jesus said I've done my part. He said I preach the gospel to you every Sunday morning. I've done my part. I give you the word. Every time you open up the Bible, every time you turn it on the Christian yeah. radio station, every time you run up against that Christian co-worker that hemmed you up in the corner that you got tired of dealing with, but now the Spirit then told you, you need to listen to him and stop listening to everybody else on your job. Jesus said, I didn't gave you the word. Let me tell you something. If the word can't give you no joy, then you ain't got no joy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You like Tommy on Martin. Tommy always front. I'll be by there when I get off work, dog. <laughs> you ain't got no job. <laughs> uh, my, my. You have a job. Amen. <laughs> Look at it. He says, he says, he says, he says, he, 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 he says, he says, my joy may be made full in them. He says, I have given them thy word. Verse 14. I have given them thy word, verses 4, verses 6. Look at verse 7. Now they have come to know. When you get God's word, you come to know some things. Uh -huh. It ain't about what you think no more. The problem is we're too busy thinking instead of knowing. And if you think, sometimes you can overthink things. I can write a book on that. You can overthink some things. The answer's right there in front of you. But you're too smart for your britches, as they used to say. And you overshoot it, you overthink it, oh, yeah. and mess it all the way up. It ain't about what you think, it's about what you know. Amen. And what you know comes from your Amen. conviction in Christ Jesus. Amen. Get this, he says, verse 14, I have given them thy word. Jesus said, I've done my part. I'm coming back to be with you, Dad. I was with you before I came down here. I didn't lose anyone but Judas. And the only reason I lost him is because you prophesied.
prophesied that one of them was going to be a devil. So I did what I was supposed to do. It's time for me to come back to heaven. But you know what that? They going to need some help. Look at the text. He said, I have given them thy word. Why are they going to need some help? And the world has hated them. And you doing your best. You, 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 you. Spending all your money so that somebody can say, ain't he handsome? Ain't she pretty? Ain't you educated? It says, and the world has hated them. Why? Because of the word that I gave them. Because the word separates you from the world. The world has hated them. Why? Because you are not of the world. Amen. Stop thinking Amen. that you are of Amen. this world. You're not of this world, Amen. not even on your job. Amen. You ain't, You go to work, you punch Amen. in, you clock in, you're on a salary, whatever. Amen. You go to school. I don't care whether it's preparatory school or whether it's uh, a, a remedial school. I don't care if it's uh, 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 any type of educational institution. You're not going now to be a part of it. You're going now to be set apart from it. Amen. And you're going out talking Jesus, thinking that you're going to make some friends. Because everybody loves the Lord. No, everybody don't love the Lord. And everybody that say they love the Lord don't love the Lord. Amen. It says, and the world has hated them. Let me see. Back up. I gave them thy word. I did my job. Now they fixing to catch hell. <coughs> Translation. Amen. Hey. Why? Because they are in the word. Amen. Uh, in the world. And because they are in the world, the world hates them. Let me tell you something. When somebody hates you, that's not an easy ride. That ain't fun when somebody hates you. Because if they hate you, they are set against you. And they are opposite of you. They are contrary to you. And they are going to make life difficult for you. It is supposed to be. It is, is, is supposed to be, supposed to be difficult, difficult for Christians, for Christians down here. Down here. If you struggle to say it, you ain't get it. Mm. You ain't get it. Mm. Or you don't want to get it. Amen. But you're going to get it. He mm. says, I gave them thy word. I'm finished. I've done my job. I'm coming back to be with you. But the world is hating them like the world hated me. Mm. Mm. Our job is to identify with Jesus. Mm. And if we identify with Jesus, they hated him to the point to where they beat him. Death. But he overcame death. Hmm. My Lord. It says, and the world hated them hmm. because they are not of the world. The reason the world hates you is because you are Christian. Amen. The world hates you because you're not of this world. But what looks funny to me is when something that's supposed to be one way starts acting another. Hmm. God have mercy. Hmm. Have mercy. Hmm. The stupidest sight you can find is watching something that's A, act like it's B. Mm -hmm. I ain't never, animals got more sense than us, I ain't never seen a dog quack. Mm -hmm. We use the illustration all the time, but it ain't never happened. What we're doing, we use an illustration because we really don't want to talk about what we do as people. Mm -hmm. So we use illustration, we put it off on animals. But all I ain't right. never seen, hey, hey man, dogs, if a dog, that's what a dog do, a dog bark. Dogs don't quack. Ducks don't bark. How it look for a Christian to act like an unbeliever? That's good. Amen. Now, I'm not talking about a mature Christian that's able to do things and still glory to God. I'm talking about a Christian that wants to mix in. That wants to blend in. You know what they call that? That's called a chameleon. A chameleon is known for blending into whatever environment it's in. You can't tell. It's a lizard. It's a, it's, it's, it's a snake with legs. All and right. if he's in green, he turns green. Yeah. If he's in brown, he turns brown. Yeah. If he's in orange, he turns orange. Nah, nah, nah. 
So if orange is evil, the chameleon is evil. Yeah. If, if green is, is de debauchery, then the chameleon is debauchery. My, my, my. Amen. How it looks if you, not of the world, try to act like you in this world. Uh -huh. You can't. Mm -hmm. You cannot be in this world and of this world and talk about you saved. Look at the text. Look, look, look at the text here. Look at the text. It says, it says, I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them because they are not of this world. The word distinguishes you and separates you from the world. The only difference is we got the word, and the world doesn't have the word. We got the living word, Jesus Christ. We got the written word, the word of God, the Bible. And that separates us from the world. Now, guess what? When you put down your Bible, you put down the word. Alright. You put down the living word, you put down the written word. And when you listen to that, put down the word. You putting the word down. You don't put the word down, you pick the word up. Jesus said, if I be lifted. I will draw. How you gonna draw you putting the word down? Amen. Exalt the Savior. Amen. Not push him down. Get this. He says, he, 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 he says, and the world hates them because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. You wanna know why you get in trouble? And you ain't even trying to get in trouble. Don't you know that subliminally, subconsciously, the world is trying to take you out and don't even know it? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are this close. I'm not fixing to predict the future because you need to run a body if I do that. But we this close. We already had some issues with representation in the White House. But things looking bad out there now. It's time for us to start praying, church. Amen. <clears throat> Mama Lodge just said, she said, prayer changes things. We need to start praying. And not just praying for shape, form, or fashion. My Lord. But like Sister Wendy said, but believing that God heals us and answers us. Man. How is it that God said if we pray over it, he'll fix it. Mm -hmm. But it remains broken. Because we don't believe. My, 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 my. That applies to anything yeah, and everything. Mm -hmm. believe it. We need to adjust our expectations to that of God's. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Stop thinking physically and start thinking spiritually. Amen. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. It says, the world is going to hate us. Uh, some of you being hated right now. Some of you look like things are turning against you. And you, 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 you know what? We're in a state of shock. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. shell shocked right now. Mm -hmm. And it's true. The church is shell shocked. So we'd have been bombarded so much with evil. Till we don't know what to do. Mm. My Lord, my we grasping for anything we can to say thank Lord. you, Jesus. Mm. My and some my of the Lord. stuff we saying thank you, Jesus, to ain't nowhere near my, God. My, my, my. But it look, my, it, you, you know what it's called? It's my, called my. choosing the best of the worst. Mm. That's where we are right now. Mm. I got guys telling me every day in the midst of what we're experiencing in this political climate. Hey, boss, who you going to vote for? Now, if I had somebody to vote for, I wouldn't tell them anyway. <laughs> but since I ain't got nobody to vote for, so I'll say, you know what? I ain't nobody for me to vote for right now. <laughs> well, you got this party over here, you got that party over there, and you ain't, what party do you want? I want the party that's for Jesus, and I don't see it. Now, I respect the fact that my forefathers and ancestors died for me to vote. 
And I don't feel like I'm disrespecting them by not voting to where I'm compelled to just vote for the best of the worst. Jesus didn't leave us. You know what? Let them have what they, let them, it says, let, it says, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Render unto God what is God. So you know what? I don't have nobody that's standing up blatantly for Christianity that I can vote for. Y'all going to have y'all worldly elections. If I got to say President Trump, President Trump. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Because God held me under President Obama. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my Lord, my Lord. Right. He'll hold me under President Trump. My Lord. He'll hold me under President Clinton. That's right. Rubio or whoever. He'll hold me. Yes, he will. Because we are not of this world. Man. We're not of this world. So I'm going to stop acting like Amen. I get my joy from this world. I'm going to stop acting like this world has conspired to do me good. This world ain't conspired to do me good because this world belongs to Satan. That's why our houses are tore up. That's why our jobs are tore up. That's why our bodies are tore up. That's why our churches are tore up. Because this world does not belong to us. Now get this. Let's, let's, let's take it one step further. He says, he says you're going to be hated. And this, and oh, oh, let me back up. I don't want to run over this. Guess what? If you loved by this world, I'm not talking about love by your mom, but that's a different thing. I'm not talking about being loved by your daddy, that's a different thing. I'm saying if you are loved by this world, you're an enemy of God. You're an enemy of God. Jesus just told us they're hated by the world. They're not of the world as I am not of the world. The world hated me, so the world is going to hate anybody that is of me. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And we walking around here, get this, we want people to like us. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Shame the devil. I'm going to give this illustration. <laughs> Because it's true. It's true. <laughs> Sister Davis. <laughs> no, 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 no. I ain't putting it on. All right, I'm putting it on. All right. All right. I'm getting this one. Mama Lot turned 71. Happy birthday, Mama Lot, yesterday, man. Happy birthday. And everybody wants to show love to their mothers. Sister Davis jumped on Facebook at midnight. <laughs> Started her tribute to Mama Love. Unbeknownst to anybody else. She ain't been wrong. I jumped up at 9 o'clock in the morning, done my tribute, only to see that Sister Davis already got 27 likes. <laughs> <laughs> and the race was on. <laughs> <laughs> Who can get more likes? <laughs> So today was on the line. <laughs> oh, oh, Bob a lot pointing sister Wendy. <laughs> we would beat the devil up out here. We don't want to start no mess in the church out here. We were looking for likes. <laughs> we were looking for likes. Whether we admit it or not, we were looking for likes. <laughs> Because we want the world to acknowledge us. Yeah. Now we what we was in it for fun, right. but we were still in it. Yeah. That's, right. Yeah, that's right. And I think Sister Davis won that by a couple of likes. <laughs> because she started seven hours earlier. <laughs> but we want people to like us. That's right. And let me tell you something. Just because this world has more technology doesn't right, mean it's right. more evolved. All right, all right. It has, all right. we spend more time with our faces planted in iPads and hey, iPhones hey, and Androids, hey, and we do more hey, communication hey, via Twitter uh -huh. and, and, and Snapchat and all these other things. And, 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 and I'm liable to have more conversation with you electronically than face to face. Yeah. Yeah. Lord and you think this is what God wanted? No. I can fellowship with you over Facebook, but I 
walk right by you at the church house. Oh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This world, the world belongs to Satan. He got us thinking that we're intelligent. All the while, we are more disrespectful All right. to each other All than right. we've ever been. All right. Boy, and we think that we're smarter. Look at him. He says, he, 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 he says, get this, get this. The world hates us, and, and, and if the world loves us, it's because we're not of, it's because we love the world and not of the kingdom of heaven. You got the world and you got the eternal kingdom. So the opposite of this world is the eternal kingdom of heaven. So if we're hated by the world, then we got to be loved by heaven. And if we're loved by the world, then heaven don't know who we are. Amen. Now look at this. Last verse. This is what God is not asking the Father to do. Jesus is not asking the Father. That, see, we always think in Jesus asking God to do for us. Do this for them. Do that for them. They need this. They need that. There are some things that Jesus is not asking the Father to do for us. Now, we know this world belongs to who? Satan. It belongs to Satan. But look at what Jesus is saying. He's talking to the Father. He's told the Father, I've done my part. I'm coming back to be with you. They're about to catch hell in the world. I want to give them some joy. And the joy that they're going to get is from the words that I left them. The joy they're going to get is from the Holy Spirit I'm asking you to send back to them. But verse 15 says, I do not ask thee to take them out of the world. Now wait a minute. The world is evil. The world is bad. The world is on its way to hell. The world has nothing good for me. The world is part of Satan. It seeks to kill, steal, and destroy me. But yet Jesus is of heaven. The word is of heaven. The written word comes from heaven. The, 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 the living word is from heaven, eternity to eternity. And he is saying, Daddy, don't take him out of this evil world. Hey. Yeah. Wait, wait a minute, Jesus. Don't you want to pull them up out of that mess? No. I do not ask you to take them out of the world. Why? Because it tells me in Matthew chapter 13 around verse 30, it says, let the wheat and the tares grow together. And in that story, in that parable, it was said, well, do you want us to go and and, 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 and get the tares from amongst the wheat while they're growing so that they won't grow together? And Jesus came back and said, no, because while, you, while they're growing, they, 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 they look kind of similar as they grow. Now get this, they're completely different, but they look kind of similar as they grow. You know, you, you, you can tell them apart when they become mature. That's why a lamb and a goat, uh, that's why a baby sheep and a baby goat is still called a lamb. Because they look the same when they're born. But when they grow up, one got horns and one don't. So, so Jesus said, no, if you mess around and try to get the evil from amongst the good while they're growing, you're going to mess around and get some of the good along with the evil. But when they're full grown, I'm going to tell the reapers to go in and to easily separate the wheat from the tares so that you can take the tares and put it where I want them to grow and you can take the wheat and put it where I want it to be. So, no, don't take them out of the way. Jesus then gave you the word that overcomes the world. He has given you the word that defeats the world. Amen. It's up to you to use the written word, Amen. to use the living word,